Hi, hey, YouTube. Engineer Boy 100. Guess what I got for you guys today? Well, some of you might have guessed it. I've got a failed front cylinder in the roof mechanism for this SLK 230. So I'm going to have to take that little cylinder out, rebuild it, reinstall it, and get this roof uh, convertible roof working. Let's get started. You can see it's actually leaking through the headliner. So we're going to take the headliner off to access all the internals, clean that headliner up, dry it off, take that cylinder out, rebuild it, reinstall it, and we'll be done. First, I'm going to re remove the screws along the front and along the side to remove the headliner. Okay, I have the roof secured. I'll show you what I did to hold it for me, myself, while I, I work on the roof. I put a strap on here and then I secured it with bungee cords, four of them. Okay, and it's quite secure. I mean, if you look at the, the roof, it's, it's quite secure. Even so, you still don't want to put your hands in there uh, unless you want to lose one. Okay, so there's two screws on either side on uh, each of the strips on the right and the left of the headliner. Take those loose, remove those, and we should be able to take the headliner off, get it cleaned up, and start working to remove that cylinder. Oh, there's three. There's three screws, not two. Anyway, take the screws out. <laughs> you want you might want to use a magnet to take these little rear ones out so you don't drop them off into oblivion. Okay, we'll get this out, get it cleaned up, and then we will remove the cylinder. Build it, reinstall it, and then it will be done. Alright, so this is what the cylinder looks like before I take anything loose. We get up under here, and as you can see right here, that is the culprit. It is leaking. So, Alright, so here's a quick run through. I'll give you a shot from the other side. Go ahead and look at that mechanism. So, it's going to be three steps for me. One, I'm going to take, over, take these torque uh, screws off. There's three of them. One, two, three. Okay, so that's one. And then number two is, there's some little clip rings right here. Okay, there's one here and there's one on the actual uh, end of the ram that connects to these arms. Okay, so I'm going to take that one loose. It's right there. Okay, Let's see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see it right in there all right and then I'm just gonna un it'll free up the cylinder and then I'm just gonna unclip these uh, supports for the line so that I just get enough working room so that I can take the cylinder loose and rebuild it This one is captured, so you don't have to worry about it falling. And so, this, so these two are captured, and then there's one that uh, you can you can have to catch. So now that I have this done, I can take these two clips off. That's what's next. It's tripping, and uh, that should free up my cylinder from this bracket, and then I can start snaking some of these lines I can actually do it now just they just snap out. Alright, so and I don't need much work room in fact it's probably enough. Once I get this out, I can just open it up, take the RAM out, replace my seal, put the RAM back, and I'll just put it back in there and I'll be done. Okay, I'm gonna try to get this first clip loose right here. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to zoom it in a little bit closer for you. See if you can see me getting that off. I'm going to use a small screwdriver and try and pry it off. So here we go. I might not have a small enough screwdriver. You don't want to lose these either. I mean, you can get new ones, replacements, but just be careful, and you won't have to. There we go. See, it's one of these, two of these, and there's another one on the other end. And then you can just take the pin out the top. Don't lose that. And actually, I'm just probably going to put the clip back on it, keep them together. And there's one on the other side. Okay. There it is put back together so I don't lose it with both clips. I'm going to try and pry it. And I hope it doesn't go flying, but I think it is going to go flying. Yeah, there it went. But I got it. So once that's loose, you can take this pin out and that will relieve your cylinder. There you go. You take that out and you can work on it. And there's a detent here holding the cylinder in. And you just pry it out. You can just force it out. It pops out like this. No, not really stiff. So you can take it out of this housing and then you can work on it. Just like that. Okay, so there it's free. Now we can have access to taking out that seal. Alright guys, here's one of the parts of this job that I like least. Not because it's difficult, but because it's kind of a little bit of a Frankenstein. You gotta hack the car a bit. So me, I move the ring out of the way. Okay, the little ring. Move it out of the way. And then I'm gonna go right here in the middle. And I'm gonna go all the way down to the groove where the ring is with this Dremel. And I'm gonna make about uh, one eighth inch wide groove all the way down and then I'll slide the ring around to that opening and I can get under it and pop it out. So here we go. Okay, as you can see I've completed my little notch here and I've slid the ring across the opening of the notch. So let's get in here a little bit closer. And I can get a tool now underneath that ring and easily pry it out. So I'll go into my notch, here's my little notch. Okay. I'm going to go in under that ring and I can get under it, get some leverage, and I can pry it out. But I don't want it to go crazy so I can go either. And there we go. And now we can take the cylinder apart. Make sure you thoroughly clean all of the shavings away before you open it up. And also open the bleeder valve on the pump in the trunk. Because whether you push this in or move it out, it has to move fluid through one or the other of these lines. So you need to have a vent open so the fluid can move. Then you can gently work this out. And it takes a little bit of force, but you will have to, you can pull this top part out. And I like to do it by hand, nice and easy, so that I don't get any surprises. It's coming, and there we go. The, the seal is completely disintegrated. So I'll replace that with the O-ring from the O-ring kit. Then I'll reassemble it, and uh, put the fluid in, and it should be fine for many years to come. Okay, we've cleaned it out with towels and it's pretty clean. All of the old seal is out and all of the hydraulic fluid is out. But any little residual that might be in there, we're going to go ahead and give it a nice little squirt of air and uh, make sure all that's out of there. Do a quick visual. The kit comes with two large O-rings, two small O-rings, and one medium-sized O-ring. 
we'll be using the medium side o-ring to put it on our shaft in place of the failed seal. A little bit of lubrication from the hydraulic fluid, it should be easy to press this in by hand. We'll go ahead and put the ring on, just slide it over the shaft and get it down and work it down. I'm just going to put it down with a little screwdriver. So, get it down in the... I'm going to line up my opening with my little groove that I cut. So that it's... None of the ring is in the opening. And there it is. Now, reassemble, fill with hydraulic fluid and uh, bleed out the air. Here are the big pieces of the seal that I could recover. I think it was time to have it rebuilt. Now I'm going to reinstall the two little pins that hold the cylinder and the two little ring clips. Okay, the cylinder is remounted. We have the clips done, the two little ring clips, one here and then the one inside, right here. And we have all the mount bolts on, three of them, one, two, and three. And now all we have to do is test it to see if it works. And I'll give you three pointers of what to check if it doesn't. Okay guys, there are three things you want to check if you go to try your system after this repair and the light on the switch starts to flash. One, make sure your micro switch is working correctly and you have your little cover pulled up in the trunk to uh, depress that uh, micro switch. Um, check your fluid level, of course. Check your fluid level. And then the other thing you want to do is um, check your relay for resistance and for functionality. Make sure it clicks and works, and then check to make sure it has close to zero resistance of current going through it. Okay, And then if it still doesn't work, the last thing you want to do is, many times these systems will stop functioning if they're in between cycles. So open your bleeder, and that's going to help you bleed the air out anyway. Close the entire system down into the trunk by hand. Once it's completely closed and you close the trunk, have the bleeder open. Run the system for about 10-15 seconds to get the air out. Then close your bleeder. Okay, that's the big copper screw in the middle. And then try your system and it should work. So we're going to go ahead and try ours now and see what happens. Wish me luck.